Welcome, Miguel. Glad to have you. All right. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and throw the meeting notes in the agenda uh, in the chat. Um, if everyone wouldn't mind going and just making sure that you uh, fill out the attendee sheet uh, down on the 2022-10.05 minutes, uh, that'd be really appreciated. I can keep track of um, everyone who has been here today. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, can everyone see this okay? Yep. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so again, yeah, if, if everyone can just come on here and just make sure you put your name down in the, uh, the attendees section, we'd appreciate that. Um, is there anyone new on the meeting today who we haven't had come to the uh, meetings in the past? We'd love to have you just take a couple uh, minutes to introduce yourself and if there's anything that you'd like to discuss this week. I'll go first and I won't take minutes. I'm Mark Lavi. Uh, I'm brand new to Caston and that's a Veeam company. <clears throat> and I'm the open source uh, product manager. So I'll be uh, helping out probably here as I'm coming up to speed uh, with a lot of our efforts as far as internal prioritization, coordination with this project and adoption, of course. And that's it. Well, fantastic. Glad to have you, Mark. That's awesome. Um, and we're, we're happy to help out as much as we can along the way. So glad to have you. Is there anyone else? Okay. Well, I guess we will take that as a no. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, glad to be here with everyone. Um, and uh, it looks like we don't have a whole lot in the agenda or notes this time, but we do have some PRs that do need attention. Is there anything that anyone would like to just bring up as a discussion point, questions, concerns, feelings, thoughts, impressions? I know that we just had a release recently. Um, I actually, unfortunately, didn't follow that too well. How, how is that going, by the way? Someone can probably speak to it better than I can, but I think we've had <laughs> the, um, the release candidates been cut. And I think we'll have the, um, our, our final version along our monthly uh, release schedule will be released. Uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, either the end of this week or the start of next week. Well, that That's is fantastic. Version 0 0.580. Yes. That's awesome. Um, I, I, I work as uh, kind of a shameless plug, but I, I'm on the, uh, the confidential containers group. Um, and we just had our first uh, version 0 0.1.0 release uh, just this last week. So I, I always love when releases come around because I, I love to see all the new things that are happening and, and all the fixes and stuff. So um, that's awesome. Uh, it looks like we do have a discussion that was added in here about Qbert and Prow jobs. Um, yeah. Hey, Larry, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, yeah, I brought this up previously on, on previous community meetings, but I um, just wanted to let everybody know now that the uh, Kubert Kubert Pro jobs, rather than using a Docker and Docker base, we're using a Podman base. So that was changed over this week. Um, Podman gives us a few advantages. So it, we've been making an effort to move all of our kind of CI jobs over to this Podman base. Um, there will be follow up to a couple of other uh, projects that are under the Kubert umbrella. Um, but the main repo is now fully running under uh, Podman. Well, that's a pretty significant change. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Was there was that primarily just because of the daemonless uh, ability to run it, or? Yeah, there's there's a couple of benefits we can get from it. Um, yeah, the rootless mode and daemonless, and also we can uh, move images around without the need of a registry or something like that as well. So there's there's a number of benefits. Oh, well, that's, I mean, that's great news. I mean, that, I think progress is always good. So uh, that's, that's fantastic. So everyone, you know, I encourage you to, to go take a look at that and play around with it. 
yeah, move forward with that. Um, all right, Andrew, looks like you threw on something about Hacktoberfest. Is there anything you want to talk about with that? Yep. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, I, sh I should have put this up earlier. Um, no, Hacktober you're fine. We've got, um, we've added the Hacktoberfest labels um, to the user guide, and we've now added one to, there's one issue in Qbert, Qbert um, that has the Hacktoberfest slash good first issue on it. Um, since these, uh, you know, are now findable and, and visible. Um, uh, I'll just encourage people to, um, if you can, um, go through the, the user guide and, and if you, you see anything that's kind of like strikes you as something that would be good that you can write, create an issue that um, is good for someone that doesn't necessarily have strong product knowledge that will be able to work on it um, and provide, you know, um, uh, comprehensive information in the issue details so that someone can come along totally fresh and um, and kind of understand what, what the problem is, what the solution is, then that would be uh, super helpful. Um, and I'll look into um, promote these today, tomorrow, Friday. Kind of like so yeah, tomorrow day. I like that. Sorry, you know, a little bit of a loud keyboard, so I apologize, but I figured I'd just take a couple notes there for it so we can keep track of those for people who aren't on the call today. Um, that's great, though. Yeah, and um, when does the Hacktoberfest officially start? Is it just from first to the end of it, or is there yeah, a that's right. Got... Okay, awesome. It's it's already started. Awesome. Well, that is fantastic. All right. Um, is there anything else that anyone would like to to talk about? And again, it's open discussion floor. Um, we'll talk about anything if anyone's got anything. All right. Well, then I guess we'll go ahead and move on to, it looks like we have a couple of PRs that uh, need some attention here. So I'll go ahead and get those pulled up. All right. Zoom is in the way. There we go. Pull some up to. Okay. All right. So this one is use exponential backup for failing migrations. And it looks like when migration, uh, when migrating a VM fails, an increasing exponential backup will be applied before retrying. Um, and it's meant to fix this particular one. And. and Looks like there's been some good discussion on it. Do we, do you know, Andrew, in particular, what is needed on this? Uh, is it just more reviews or is there some discussion around this PR? Um, so I added this one because it looks as though um, he's, he's tagged people to look at it. And I don't know if people have those there. reviews. Okay. Well, I don't have any of the approval stuff, but I'm happy to take a look at it. Um, at least just give it a set of eyes. Um, uh, yeah, for, for these um, PRs, best I just go through and see what has been raised in the last eight days um, that hasn't got attention and bring it up here just in case one of the people is on the call and say like, you know, would you mind jumping on this and um, take it on? I think sure. I see Jed on the call and I think Jed's been tagged on it. Um, yeah. Cool. That's my my MO. Awesome. Um, great. Um, it, so, Jed, would you have some cycles to look at this today, then? Uh, yeah, I will. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, let's move on to the next one. If there's nothing else about that, we've got this guy, Move Test Agnostic. So this is another one. Looks like we had a couple people tagged on it. As well, let's see what is this. this is test my Windows OS to be tested. See, it only has a Coptic Windows license. Close. 
And so this one, you guys are looking to just kind of add a test flag to for if it's a window specific build. I don't have a Windows machine, so unfortunately I can't help out too much on this one. Um, but Kidar, um, if you're on, or uh, I think I think I, I, think, I yeah. think I can check with uh, Lubo and see what the status of this one is. Um, I, he's normally he's, he normally joins these calls, but uh, he's, I don't think he's available today. Um, okay. So I just I just check with him after this on this one. So you can CC me on on the PR if you want. Okay, sure. Uh, what's your is what is your thing, John? It's it just... Brian Brian and Carrie. Yeah. Awesome. Apologize, I'm still getting to getting to know the people and the names, so <laughs> have to bear with me on that. Um, all right, so I got you CC down there, and then it looks like we got this last one on here is bump for log D memory requirement to twenty maybe bytes, and. It's a little tight, and so okay, this one, and it looks like um, a couple people are on here as well. Um, would you mind syncing up with them about this one as well? It looks like he's tagged on it. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, I'd be able to check with him on that. Okay, awesome. Okay, well, I think that's all of the ones that we had thrown in there. So uh, thank you everyone for getting some eyes on that and doing some additional review. Um, and then mailing list review. So we've got these guys here. I want to let me open that. I'll just go this way. Um, again, I'm not super familiar with this. I'm not sure if this is just kind of more to point out. Um, some things that are happening in the uh, in the mailing list. Um, is that generally how this goes over? Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So before before the meeting, I, I try and go through and, and pick out the things that we should pay attention to. Um, this was uh, this is a proposal by Fabian Deutsch, one of our maintainers, um, and it's about mm -hmm. changing the way that we, um, I guess, organize our approvers and the you know how we go through the approval process. Um, and so I brought this up because A, it doesn't have any replies, um, but B, um, it's it's a proposal to change the fundamental, uh, a fundamental piece of you know, this community. Um, and so it would be good if people were able to take the time to read this proposal. Uh, there's a slide deck in the email. Um, I've got the links there, I see. And like, be aware of it, and if you have uh, thoughts, opinions, uh, dissent, um, please make them known. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's really important. And so this is a proposal to um, to lower the number of owners um, based off of kind of how, how things have been going. Exactly. So um, as he says there, we've got uh, 12 official um, owners who are across the Kubert Kubert repo entirely. Um, mm -hmm. This is a proposal to uh, to continue to have that, um, and I think uh, Fabian uses the term Uber approver, um, and to have basically um, a he, he uses the it's like SIGs as vertical um, interest groups and a new kind of horizontal SMEs, which are focused more on like the component or um, a, a different level of um, domain knowledge so that we can have um, more approvers for one who might have, um, so I think one of the horizontal groups he's got in there is live migration. So someone that is has domain knowledge and is like a live migration um, expert is able to um, review and approve PRs that touch upon the live migration um, part of, of Kubert. Um, and so we're able to have a more uh, approvers take the ease the burden of these current uh, twelve people. Um, also provides a you know a, um, a better developed pathway to become a quote unquote Uber approver. 
And it also provides us with a, a list of um, additional kind of SMEs that we can call upon if say, you know, um, we're reviewing something or one of these 12 people are reviewing something and it, it happens to involve a, a component or something that those people may not necessarily, like might be a bit of a blind spot for them. So then they're able to say, hey, I can look at this list, see three names, I'll call in one of them and they can review this part that um, you know, I don't necessarily have the, the knowledge for. So that's that. I could I could see that being really useful, especially as we start getting into, you know, uh, trusted execution environments and, and stuff like that with confidential um, behavior. Uh, I could see that being really useful for the different, you know, hey, we've got someone who specializes in, you know, Intel TDX or someone who specializes in, you know, the uh, the ARM versions or someone who's in the AMD stuff. And that could be that could be helpful to make sure things are going as, as expected. Cool. All right. Well, yeah. Um, if you have any thoughts, stuff, I'll, I'll definitely. Um, I haven't actually got on the mailing list yet. I wasn't aware there was one. So I will uh, make sure that I get on and uh, and respond to that. That's really cool. All right. Well, and I think, I think he's opened that slide deck um, to the entire Qubit dev group. And so if you have a question, please raise a question as a comment on the slide deck or in email. And then uh, this obviously is a comment in regards to the changes of the release notes with the, the new release schedule. And that makes sense. Uh, this is just probably making sure that the release notes uh, fall in line with the, the new schedule. So Exactly, and, and a change in the way that we'll need to do things. And so this will, this mm -hmm. is another thing that will, um, if it like, if it goes ahead as currently proposed, it will affect everyone in the, in the way that we um, uh, label our PRs. Uh, for this and so this is currently a, a email thread to kind of like gather ideas and then I'll, I'll create a design proposal um, from this uh, which will probably come relatively soon but if you have thoughts um, please add them to the thread will do okay fantastic um, sounds great and that looks like we just have uh, one issue on the bug scrub so let me get that pulled up real quick all right, and so this is one that's from six days ago, but delete does not always return K8SIO uh, status like the open API spec says. Um, so you go through, you return one of two things, K8SIO machinery status, machine instant type, and then you get to edit the MI and remove the finalizer, then edit the VMI. This is not how users normally delete VMIs. Normally, the user will delete the VMI first, which returns. Um, this is because Kubernetes controls the VMI garbage collection. So a delete call from a client actually triggers an update on the VMI to add the delete deletion timestamp. Kubernetes should have an opinion on which return type is used since there are two options. Option two makes more sense since it is usually how users typically consume the API. Having the correct value affects generated code. So many generated clients are likely to ignore the value in its current state. Okay, so this is just saying we, this is kind of more request to make a, a change to the way that we interact with this so that it does kind of follow more of the option two. Um, all right. Has anyone had any chance to try to reproduce this behavior? Take that as a no. Um, I'm not super familiar with this particular API call for deleting the VMI, but I do think that it would make sense. You probably want to go through the most expected path, um, especially if it's going to make things more reasonable for the way that it behaves. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to approach this because I think it's something that definitely needs to be addressed, but I'm not sure if there's actually a uh, yeah, path forward. Um, is there anyone who works particularly on the open API who um, is familiar enough with where this is at and making the change in that area to have this more comply with that? 
or do you know of anyone who I could uh, CC on this to get some more eyes on it? You know, I wonder if this would be a good Hacktoberfest issue, if we should mark it with a good first issue label. I think that that would make sense. It doesn't seem like it's a super involved change. Um, that, that being said, again, not super familiar with this area of the code. So if, if uh, it, it seems like it should be relatively straightforward to, to implement this, but um, again, I, I don't want to try to speak authoritatively here because I'm not, not necessarily in that area. So uh, does anyone have any, any opinions on that? I, I'm inclined to agree though. It does seem fairly straightforward. Maybe I'll just leave a comment. Uh, this may be a good option for the October fast. Um, that option two does seem to make most sense that first round. All right, so put a comment on there. Hopefully we can get some more uh, some more movement on that. Um, I don't have rights to the labeling system. So if uh, someone does and agrees with that, um, I'd really appreciate that. Maybe I'll put that in the meeting notes here. That's a follow-up. chat because I've been on here. Has there been anything in the chat? Let me go ahead and stop sharing for a brief second. All right. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I, I think that's basically everything on here. Um, great. Is there any other discussion points that anyone would like to bring up? It looks like we might have a bit of a shorter meeting this morning. All right, well, um, I'll give the, the traditional countdown of three, two, one. All right, thanks everyone for the call. Appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thanks, Mavis and Larry. No worries.